Hi, this is Dr. Carpenter again. Um, back to talk about a, an issue that actually is what got me into biological dentistry, and that is uh, the concept of mercury. Um, I've drawn a tooth here to kind of be able to talk a little bit about how we remove a mercury filling, and there's different aspects to this. Um, it cannot be uh, overstated uh, of how serious it is to have mercury in your body. We are not aware of a more poisonous metal on the planet and it is absolutely insidious how it works. Please refer to the video um, about mercury science to get more science information about how mercury affects our body. I wanted to talk a little bit about how we look at these mercury fillings and how we help get them out of people's bodies for them. One of the things that will happen before we ever start a procedure is a patient will meet and work with Melissa Russ. Um, the people that we have the best results, the most predictable outcomes as far as improving overall health as a result of removing mercury go through our full process. That means they will see Melissa Russ first in order to have a look at their, their blood chemistry, to do a, a blood analysis, a, a blood chemistry evaluation, so they can see what types of impacts mercury has had on the body. She sets nutritional protocols, um, sleep protocols, stress management protocols, and all these things, and basically gets the body working. There's different ways that people can try to remove metals. Melissa Russ has a, a video about her thoughts around chelation and how we get a patient prepared for metals, so I'll let you refer to that website to get more detailed information. We follow the Huggins protocol when it comes to removing mercury. Dr. Hal Huggins, over the course of, of his life, finessed and manipulated and changed his process a little bit all the time based on what he was reviewing with patients' blood chemistry to know what was the most effective. Some of the components of the, the Huggins protocol is to use intravenous vitamin C the day we remove mercury and also the following day. It's an immune, immune booster and it helps to um, lessen the negative impacts of having mercury removed. Uh, the number one priority when we're removing mercury with a patient is to keep it from getting in their bodies. Uh, we protect their air source, so we have a nose piece on them that they breathe through the entire appointment. Inhalation vapor from mercury removal is one of the most dangerous routes to be exposed to mercury with. I drew a picture of a tooth here so I could kind of show you a little bit about how we do it. But this is the mercury filling in the middle of a molar. When we, when we actually remove a mercury filling, we don't, we, we, we don't just put our burr right in the middle and grind it out like this. The number of mercury atoms that's generated and released into the environment, is, it's impossible to count. And every one of them can elicit a, a disease process in a patient. So it's something we take very seriously. As far as the physical removal of mercury, what I typically do with my burr is go just to the outside of that mercury filling so we don't really touch the mercury or we touch it as little as we have to and we try to trough around that mercury filling so that we can ideally lift it out in a piece or a couple pieces and that cuts down on the exposure with a patient. Um, in addition to trying to remove it in a certain fashion we always use a, a nitrile or vinyl based rubber dam material. It's been shown to be less permeable to mercury movement than latex. And um, there's many different aspects to the protocol we follow that you know we can discuss with you when you come in as a patient. Um, the main thing I wanted to talk about is when we talk about how to replace the space that's left behind from having the mercury filling removed, we only advocate using safe materials. Uh, we only stock and keep the safest materials that are known for composite resins and things that are safely used for filling teeth. Those, that's all we keep in our office. Um, we routinely run compatibility reports on patients individually to find out what materials are most ideal for them. The way I've drawn this mercury filling, it's, it's a one surface filling kind of right down on the biting surface, but that's not the way they all are. Some mercury fillings extend out here out here and out here. So when we go in and we look at this tooth, you know, maybe uh, 80, 85 percent of the tooth has actually already been replaced by mercury. When we remove all that, there's very little tooth structure left. Sometimes, it, you know, depending on the goals of the patient, we may try to place a stronger restoration. That's when we really depend on a compatibility report to know what's safe for people. Um, 
If you're interested in making positive changes with your health, um, the research is undeniable. One of, the, one of the great ways to get started with it is to have mercury removed. The reality is mercury um, in the mouth causes an exposure to us every second of every day. Mercury is one of the rare metals that is a liquid at room temperature and it is always trying to return to that form. It is always off-gassing pure mercury atoms. We breathe them in, we swallow them. They do an incredible number of different negative things to our body. We think that um, one of the foundations to having good overall health is not having these types of poisonous metals in your mouth. Myself, my wonderful staff, Melissa Russ, and we've all taken on a considerable amount of training and research in order to know what the safest process is for removing these things. And we're very happy to have you as a patient, and we're very happy to help remove your mercury safely.